Bucks at this stage, Malcolm, no surprises. No, that wouldn't be the case, Sandy, unless they've got 22 out there, but Fraser Brown certainly coming out, as you said. Greg Williams, what a day for him. He's won just about every individual award, but there is to be one in the game. All that is missing is a Premiership medallion. Yes, he's been such a wonderful player too, Sandy, and uh, it would be great to have his career off with a Premiership. Well, he's got a birthday this weekend, and I'm sure there's no other way he'd like to celebrate it. It's one of the and great spectacles in sport, that isn't it? Isn't it? Yep. There's hundreds of thousands of balloons uh, let loose from the MCG. The Carlton theme song, the Navy Blues, rings out around the ground. Big moment, big moment, and young Scott Camp early there in the middle of the screen. He's had a great first, first up season. But they are hoping to break the drought. 32 years, it was back in 1963. There is Tanner, closest to camera. Remarkable performance too, Shane Brewer. Two starts in the AFL, two years. He's playing in his second grand final. And hasn't he been an exciting player? He's really given it some back and snap. Let's not uh, also forget to share a thought for those four players in Geelong side that are playing in their fourth grand final. There is Gary Ablett in the middle. Lee Tudor, Liam Pickering's had an excellent year, although the umpires didn't think so on Brownlow medal night. Ken Hinckley, as we have a look at the sides as published. Yes, they've both been pretty settled, these sides, for most of the year. There will be a couple of changes, probably. They'll just test a few moves out. They might even put them back to their original positions. But I really do think, as we mentioned before, Sandy, that Madden and Barnes is a super contest in the middle of the ground. And if he can get his hand on the ball, that big fella, the Carlton small men are going to be really running at goals. What about the matchups? There's going to be probably five or six around the ball matchups I'm talking about all day. Yes, there will be, I'm sure. Hocking, you would think, might go with uh, Bradley like they did in round 12 at Princess Park early in the year. And Bradley was very good. Yeah, they went by three points, Carlton, but it was a terrific game. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and free. We've golden soil and wealth for toil. Our home is girt by sea. Our land abounds in nature's gifts of beauty. This is Sexton with the football. He kicks towards centre-half forward for the Blues. The ball hits the front. Brown hand pass. Couch very productive, but that hand pass a little bit too far. Down goes another Carlton player. In comes Hannah. Hand pass to Ratton. Ratton's kicked to the far half forward. 
Knocked out of the way and taken away by McGrath. Strong football by the Geelong halfback. His kick is a little ordinary. It's bouncing awkward for Tudor. Through goes Sexton. Down goes Hocking. Some good crunching by both sides, particularly by the Cats. Hannah tackled by Hocking. And again, is that dropping the ball? Yes. No, it's a free kick to Hannah. And it turns between halfback and centre wing. Is Gary Hocking fired up? Well, they should all be fired up, Sandy. This is a grand final. There's no prizes for second in this game. Tim McGrath tries to take the ball in front of himself. This is Scholl for the Cats. He's tackled by Clapay. The ball hits the ground. In goes Pickering. Back to McGrath. Still the pressure applied. Bradley the first chance to score. Bradley shot for goal. It's the first goal of the grand final to the Blues. Just fantastic pressure then from the Carlton half forward line to keep that ball in. They really did work hard as a unit. And eventually it fell to Craig Bradley. Just terrific pressure here. Clapay does all the hard stuff. Williams just enough pressure. Rice come in with a great smother. And Bradley the finisher. Wonderful start. McGrath caught on Bradley too across half back. Carlton leads by six points. Hocking through but without it. Madden got a hurried kick as the Blues go down towards the half forward line once again. Defending was Graham. Off to Barnes. He sweeps it wide to Paul Brown who's got a little bit of space. Can chip towards centre wing. It had to be perfect and it was to meet. Who thought about going on to Colbert but now goes back. And will kick up towards the Geelong 50. Brownless again in front. Got a touch but that was all. Was unable to hold the mark. Kudafidis holds the football in that huge hand and then gets a kick down towards centre wing. Brown rides his opponent, Matt Clappe, into the ground and he'll take the free kick. Kernahan coming a long way out. Spalding is at half forward and the Duke of Earl has it. Between yes, Michael, centre and half forward. Michael Mansfield on Pierce, here we go. Kicks down towards that area now. Through the hands of Pierce and back to Mansfield. He gets crunched by Rice, but he gets his kick, and it's effective to McGrath. McGrath's on the outer wing, and the Cats are away. Well, certainly the crowd are being entertained early with some uh, bone-shattering bumps. McGrath's kick has been marked by McKay Brewer. Just a little unnecessary attention, but McKay shrugs the tackle and then kicks to the wing. Hannah in front, good mark in front of Law. Yes, that's an interesting matchup. that one. Law a lot shorter, of course. Hannah goes into Ratton. Ratton a handball over the top. Good into the path of Sexton. Sexton's kick, two full forward, Kernahan at the crumbs, Clapay, lovely little hand pass, Williams, have a look at this, Greg Williams, no he misses, and he misses by a long way, oh, he misses yeah. everything. Could have put a lot of money on that one, Robert. Oh, there was threes on in the run, and at Brownless down from the Spalding bump, but the free kick is with Mansfield, he's in the right back pocket for Geelong. Pretty well perfect conditions for a game of football, he's kicked to the wing. Taken by Kudafidis, tries to get it to Williams, chopped short, Brown tackle, umpire, let's play go on, the ball spills now, chance for McGrath again, it's his fourth touch early in the game, he's kicked to the wing, it misses Ratton, it falls for Minch, but he's knocked down and Ratton was uh, astray, the kick to half forward, Madden, that's a mark, and it's been paid to Justin Madden, he's at left half forward, 55 metres from goal. Great Bradley now moved onto the ball, onto Gary Hocking, so that match up from round 12. But Optus Oval's on again. Madden, you would think uh, just out of his distance. He's trying to check with the umpire as to where the man on the mark is. He kicks it towards full forward. It's an ill-directed kick sitting underneath at Kernahan, taking it as cold, but he runs away from centre half back. His kick slews off the side of his boot. Out to towards the wing. Geelong have got the chance here, Couch. He gets the hand pass to Tudor. Beautiful running provided by Tudor. The mark is dropped by Brewer. In goes McKay. He's punch wide towards the wing. Ablett's in the action. Tries to get it back to Brewer. Brewer's got the ball. Silvani applies the tackle. McKay goes oh. for the boundary line. And some desperate defence by the Blues results in a throw-in as we have a look at Hickmott, Tanner and Hinkley on the bench for the Cats. Fantastic pressure there. Not to grab the player there, McKay, just to harass him. Great stuff. Just the one goal scored in the opening five minutes. Couch under all sorts of pressure from McKay. He goes again. Gets a little chip down towards full forward. Ablett as he pushed. No, said the umpire. Silvani now filling the heat. 
still in the danger zone as Peter Dean picks it up and coolly comes clear. Back towards the middle. No one able to take it cleanly. Hannah eventually gets it away to Sexton. He goes into the open spaces. It bounces down towards half forward. Graham and Kernahan were both there. Towards McGrath at the back. He's clear. Wobbles it towards the half-back flank region. It will beat all players over the line. And a throw-in to take place as we see the Carlton bench. With Scott Camparelli, the spotlight has certainly been on him in recent times. And Manton on his right with Adrian Whitehead. Here's Kurt Afidis to Williams. Look out. Cool. Punches it over the back towards Rice, who goes through strongly. Brown almost taken high. Rice comes again for a second attempt. Back to Williams. Kick well smothered by McGrath. He was held. Eventually wide to Barnes. A cruel bounce for Barnes. Good attacking work by Peter Dean. Oh, great stuff by Dean. Had to beat a couple. That is unbelievable. That's what grand finals are about. That's sensational. Two on one. Very rarely does that happen. But just his desperation was great. Wanted to play on to Williams, but goes back over the mark. Lee Colbert picking up Kuda Fides. Dean's kick perhaps lets him down a little as he tried to go in towards the forward pocket zone and Earl Spalding Handley sees it over the line. Fine day in Melbourne. There may be the odd shower later in the day, but at the moment it's overcast but relatively warm. Williams picking up early possessions at will. Flicks it towards the 50 and Kernahan again. Can't take it cleanly. Rattens at the back. Pickering and Brown there also. Picked up by Brown. In trouble. Handley. Well smothered. It's still in Carlton's forward zone. Eventually to couch. You can chip to Brown and they'll get away. Brown is at centre half back. His kick. Little short. But take, judging it very well was Brewer. Manton going back. Couldn't quite reach it. Brewer's kick into the pocket. Short. Hits Sexton. That's bad football. You've got possession of it. You need to do a little bit better than that. Sexton is in the back pocket. He's probably a little bit further forward than the back pocket. He's kicked towards the wing. The contest there, and the free kick has been paid to Kudafidis against Young Colbert. Kudafidis goes down the boundary line, and the mark there is to be taken by Clap A. So the Blues doing well in the early minutes. Yeah, both Ruckman playing wide of each other too. Marshalling there across half back. Well, it was a bad mistake by Clap A. The short kick meant for McKay. Colbert chipped in. Gets the hand pass back. Geelong rebound. Here's another rebound. That kick was smothered. Kudafidis has had a few touches. His kick is short. Knocked away from Kernahan. Williams, a free kick. He's paid to the Carlton captain against young Ben Graham. Interesting. Three smothers in their forward line already, Carlton. They're really trying to keep that ball in. Goes short. And fine Spalding. Still, it may be a distance that will concern the key Carlton forward, Earl Spalding. Usually find the endeavours to try and get the distance. The players lose accuracy. Spalding kicking from 45, perhaps 50 metres when he kicks it. Well, Ooh. gee, he does a pretty good job. Gets the distance just off to the left and through for one behind. So Carlton lead, they're 1-1, Geelong yet to score, and we've played about eight minutes in the 1995 Grand Final. Ben Graham to bring it back into play. When he goes long, he's a huge kick. Attempted to get onto that one, but didn't. Brown may keep it in play for Carlton. Ratten's a chance, and he's inside 50. He snaps as he tries to bend it back. Not far enough, another behind. Golden rule at Geelong, if you try a talk like Ben Graham did then and it doesn't work, you put it away for the rest of the day. So I'll just be interested to see if Benny grand final nerves will get him. Proper. It's been put away. Hannah! Big Bill! The only flyer on the outer side. Ratton screaming for it, so too is Spalding. He elects to go a more direct route to goal to Kernahan, who gave a shot. And the umpire said no, sticks. You can't do that. Yeah, interesting call from Darren Goldspink as he watched it. Kernan just nudges him with his elbow, shoulder. Fantastic. Great play within five metres. Bit harsh on Stephen Kernahan. Graham from the back pocket. Barnes. 
Flying from behind. And Hannah is there to tidy up for Carlton. He's got time to have a look down to the Kernahan area again. Again, he almost gives a nudge. Williams is there. Well done. Kernahan off the ground. Carlton are away again. Just once again, smart play on the forward line by Carlton. They really aren't giving Geelong an early opportunity. Just having trouble getting the ball down to Ablett. But great contest. No different, really, was it? The push on from Ben Graham from the last one. And that clever hand from Greg Williams set up an easy goal off the ground for the skipper. And he's pretty happy about that. And the Blues have got their second. Well, Carton lead 14 to 0. Geelong get the ball up towards their half forward line. Sexton running with the flight of the ball. Couldn't take it. This is a chance for Ablett. Left foot snapshot by Gary Ablett. He's offline. First score for Geelong, and that will be a slight relief for the Cats. It's taken them a little while, but uh, at least they're on the scoreboard. Great play then from Liam Pickering out of the centre. He is a he is a hard hitter, as we call him in footy. He really does get in underneath and set up opportunities. Madden and uh, Hannah, Chris do to do the kicking in straight down the ground. Gets it well outside 50. Contest, oh. and there was no contest in the finish. Big Justin Madden has taken the mark. He sweeps the ball wide to left half back. This boy kicked the ball in from the behind, and he's got it on the wing. His short kick is all right. Brown has marked. Fraser Brown, the man in question as to whether he would play. He's out there in the middle of the action. He kicked his lands with Ratton. Ratton can go to the forward pocket area. Pierce and Mansfield. Good contest. The ball spill. Spalding. Close to the line, it'll go over in front of Earl Spalding. And just looking at uh, Hannah, who's had six possessions around Lord's nut. They've actually now changed it. Peter Riccardi's gone on to Lord. He's very dangerous as we look. Kenny Shelton, former coach of St Kilda, now South Adelaide, looks on. From the throw-in, still in Carlton's forward zone. Williams inside 50. The diesel heads for home. They've got number three. Blue boys are pretty hot in this first quarter. Yes, indeed they are. And, uh, three goals at the start of the game is pretty handy. It's a fantastic tap from Stephen Kernahan. And Red, instead of just pushing it back to the boundary line, he tried to do something creative. And Will of the Wisp, Red Williams, got in behind them all and kicked beautifully. Well, there's uh, David Parker, Cole Kinnear, and the brains trust of Carlton. Seeing their side away to a fly. They lead by 19 points. Barnes tries to win it out of the middle, but again, it's Madden who locks it up. Oh, he held onto it for a long time, and eventually Hogging takes it away. A high kick wide towards the wing. The bounce favours Kuda Fides. Off to the running McKay. Another one towards Ratton. Good interception by Brown. Look at Hogging go charging through. Almost caught with the ball. In fact, he is. We'll have to come back. Kuda Fides was away. Bratton will take it, just forward of centre. Still gets the chance to kick to an unmarked player. It's Hannah. Hannah's kick into the pocket. The lead provided by Pierce, and he's in front of Mansfield. And he takes a good mark. Be careful, Greg Williams. The umpires are right onto it. He was prepared to protect his teammate, Brad Pierce. Interesting move, this. It was always going to be on that Michael Mansfield would play on him. But Michael Mansfield across half back is such a great rebounder that he may not just get the possessions to set him up from there. And a fantastic jump from Pierce. Well, Pierce in his preferred pocket, if there is a preferred pocket, kicks with his left foot. Not a bad kick. The Blues have got their fourth on the ball. You see, and you call it. Uh, Pierce has really been the surprise goal kicker of the season. Probably the, one of the most improved players in the competition. He does, he's a bit of a point kicker, but that was just a magnificent kick. And that is a real honest jump at the footy, isn't it? Mick Mansfield trying to do everything right as a defender, a half a metre away, and the extension of the arms was just sensational. Barnes gets the first hand of the ball, but two defeat, he's playing a terrific game in the middle of the ground. Hog, oh, his kick finds Rice. All Blues players getting onto the football early in the grand final. Club Bay couldn't take the mark, but he goes after it. His second go at it was good. Williams, a handball. Spalding, snapshot by Spalding. This is close too. Listen to the stand. No, he misses. Oh, that 
was a huge kick from there. Spalding second behind. Michael Tuck, Gary Ayres, Neville Bruns, Paul Armstrong. Geelong coaches box. Carlton booted three goals in four minutes. At the moment, they've ripped open this first quarter. Pickering has it on half-back. Tumbles a wobbly old punt kick to Hanley. And Stephen Hanley will try and guide Geelong up towards the wing. McGrath has drifted down to that position. Not bad play this, Andy. Just trying to steady this down a bit. Yep. Well, they've certainly got to do that. Barnes floats in front, hocking attacks from the back, and he does it well. Off the couch, a little left foot chip. No one there, however. And again, Peter Dean. Courageous Peter Dean defends as Christou runs off. They've got players running everywhere, but it bounces off Lord. He gave a push, and Christou will take it on half back. Yeah, Lord's gone down to that pocket to be placed by Peter Riccardi onto Hannah. Spalding drifted a long way down, but he's got it for Bradley. Bradley sweeps it back to Christie. Towards Kudafidis, who could pluck at him with the one hand. But solid attention from Colbert. Keeps out Kernahan as Graham gets a clearing kick to centre wing and Brownless. Brownless has got a fire as he gives it to Lord. Aaron Lord. To half forward. McKay in front. No mark paid. Couch tries to soccer off the ground. Minch tried to storm through. McKay went again. Ratton. Hassled by Brewer. Still going. Bradley forward to the middle. Madden away to Sexton. Carlton's away. In towards half forward. And a mark taken on the last line of defence by Manfield. He gives it to Scholl. And Scholl away comes Geelong. Scholl gets the ball to Pickering. Pickering's kicked towards half forward. Barnes and Bradley. Shepherding is it now. The advantage is paid to Geelong. Hawking's kick towards full forward. Big fly by Brownless. Ball punched to the front of the pack. Chance for Ablett. Pushed by Silvani, but Ablett's kick gets the distance. Not the accuracy, just offline. Second behind to Geelong. Aaron Lord off the ground, and Adrian Hickmont now going into that forward pocket onto Christo. Saw Gary Ablett give away a couple of handballs last week, and that's two snapshots he's done around his body and uh, has missed both of them. So. Points will come from those sort of shots at goal. Christy from the pocket goes short to Dean. Again, another one finds Hogg. Cock one early. He's a tough nut, however. He kicks towards Madden. Barnes over the top and he spoils Mint basketball style back to Hanley. Hanley's caught. The ball spills free. He shovels it forward to Brownless, who was taken high. Kudafidis keeps on going to Sexton. There's been a whistle. It'll come back. And it's going to Kudafidis or Sexton. Well, that could be 50. Minutes. That's silly. Frustrating play. Sexton will take it, and he'll amble down almost to half forward. He'll certainly kick them deep into attack. Two crucial bits of play there. I mean, just the original free kick when nothing was on to give it away, and then they throw the 50. Disappointing. Sexton stabs in towards Pierce territory. Colbert tidying up for Geelong across to Hocking. Pierce caught one, but picks himself up and goes back in towards the forward zone as Brownless takes the mark. Seven shots to two. Tells the story of this first quarter. Hickmont started on the bench, as Malcolm said. Barnes to right half forward. Pickering's got Ablett one out. Here he is. Tanner also coming onto the ground for Geelong. And Handley is the player coming off. So a big moment for Grant Tanner, who missed last year's grand final. Interesting. Just that ability for the champion player to read the ball quickly off the boot. A perfect example of that. Kept his eye on it. Great reading of the game. Champion, he certainly is. 122 goals for the 95 season. Says it all for Gary Ablett. As the rain starts to tumble down here at the MCG, Ablett has posted yet another behind. That is three. He has Geelong's score. After the fix up there, Grant Tanner on the ground, and Tim McGrath's gone to centre half back on Earl Spalding. Handy lead that with that rain coming down. Now four goals. 
it well, sits in. It was predicted, but uh, I think it was expected a little later in the day. The kick oh. by Chris Du, high leak by Kudafidis. Blues in numbers. Kudafidis gets the handball. Ratten, a little slow. A ball to be won. Brown and Sexton. Now Pickering. Pickering spots a player, but he's kicked it too far. Hannah sweeps on it. Hannah's kick down the wing. Williams. Oh, well done, Greg Williams. Is it paid? Yes, it is. Onto the left foot. He kicks to full foot. Look at this. Kernahan out in front. Can't quite collect the football. Just a little slow with Stephen Kernahan. But he goes at it again. Tries to get it to Clapay. The ball spills to the back. Barnes shrugs the tackle. Then delivers the hand pass quite nicely to Graham. Graham is at left halfback. He's forced to go long. His kick will land near the 50 metres. Sexton from behind Brownless. The ball spills to the back. Brewer fumbles. Tudor handles it nicely. Tudor's kicked to full forward. Ablett couldn't take the mark. The ball spills to the ground. Hickbot, he's only been on the ground a minute. He's hook kick. Misses to the left. And the behinds pile up for the Cats. They've now kicked four. On the other hand, the Blues have kicked four three. Yes, Gary is just sitting there pondering what might have been with those shots from Abbott and now Adrian Hickmont. Under four minutes remaining in the first quarter. As Nand Christou was told by the umpire to bring the ball back in. We'll head towards Madden. Brown was over the top. Two defeaties is the first to recover from behind. Just wobbles it towards centre wing. Brown leads Clappe. Gets rid of the football very quickly. Spooned well towards Williams, who's been very, very effective in this first quarter. Ben Graham chances his arm. The youngster does well. Graham to Brownless. He's forward of the centre. Ablett will be his target. No, he elects to go wider towards Peter Riccardi. 52 metres out. Yes, it's amazing what can happen in a game of football. That turnover from the centre, Williams' kick didn't find his mark. And that rebound football, Ben Graham attacked it. It ended up with Brownless. And Brownless with a paddock in front of him from the set plays from the kickoff. And Peter Riccardi, a beautiful kick from 15 metres out. Much needed goal to the Cats. But they are starting to get more of their share of the ball at the moment. So they're right back into this game. Carlton lead 4-3 to 1-4. Chance to clear the setter again. Ratten, hand pass to Hogg. Hogg kicks across his left shoulder down towards the half forward area. Out in front is Kernahan and he marks on his chest. That rain has become steadier in the last minute. Kernahan is too far out to score. Looks to go for the short run. Then kicks into the pocket. Oh, player on his own. Pierce. Well. I guess that's the bonus of hanging on to the football just a little longer than normal. Well, off the ball, you might not have seen that, but actually Clapay, his teammate, helped him out a bit. Just took Mick Mansfield's path for a step. Clapay uh, and then Pierce was quick enough to get away. He kicked a goal from a similar position about six minutes ago. He runs around the man on the mark, then kicks across the face of goal. And in the finish, lucky to squeeze it through for a behind. 4-4 four, four to 1-4. Blues by 18 points. And... This rain looks as though it's with us for the rest of the day. Very overcast day here in Melbourne. Kuda Fittis has had 10 positions already. He's had a sensational first quarter. This is one of the younger brigade of Carlton who have been sensational this year. Kuda Fittis hasn't missed a game. As Hannah has it fisted away. Pickering's at the back. Now a chance for DeLong. Liam Pickering puts them inside 50 as Hickmont comes screaming out. Can't take the football, but he's up and at it once again. So too is Tudor. Lee Tudor around his body, bending it inside 50, and David Mitch takes the mark. Ablett again is a one out there with Silvani. Great discipline play again from Lee Tudor. Remember last year in the Premier final against North Melbourne, that kick to the front of the goal square. He's done it again here to set up Mitch. Mitch has had a pretty good year. He's missed only one game. It's an ugly punt, but it's effective. It's the Cats' second. Yeah, so Geelong coming back quickly with two goals towards the end of the quarter. Ironically, as the rain's come down, I mean, we talked about perhaps it could have been Lee Tudor with that kick to the front. Beautifully played. And David Mitch there in a lot of space. Has improved his kicking, David. 
as you said, not that wasn't pretty, but they still give you six points for them if they go through the middle end. Helicopter. <laughs> well, Carlton get first fist of the ball through Justin Madden. Rice has got the football underneath, knocks it on. Riccardi, Brown gets the hand pass. Rice, a little bit of congestion, but he squeezes the kick to half forward. Williams in front of Tanner. Taps it clear, Bradley from 40 metres. Bradley goes for goal. And it's the Blues' turn to be inaccurate. They've kicked three behinds since their last goal. They're 4-5 to 2-4, lead by 13 points. Less than a minute left in the first quarter. Ben Graham playing on Stephen Kernahan. Kernahan has kicked a goal, as has Williams, Pierce and Bradley for the Blues. For Geelong, Riccardi and Mench. Hannah just gets his foot to it. Rice gives away a bit of ground. Back to Brown. Brown, gets a floater. Pierce underneath it. In goes Clappe. Mansfield still got the football underneath. Appeals for the free kick. The umpire allows play to go on. Eventually it's forced over. Michael Mansfield appeals for the free kick. And didn't he do very well indeed. Very similar to Peter Dean early. One against two there. Fantastic fighting qualities of Michael Mansfield. Vital seconds now for Geelong. Carlton and Dilly love one before the siren, but Couch defends to the outer side and Peter Riccardi with half a minute remaining. Riccardi goes in towards centre wing and bars. Takes it at the second grab. Floats it back to Peter Riccardi. His kick didn't travel a long way. Into Tanner in the middle. Time maybe for the Cats. Williams almost gets the smother, but it's a penetrating kick towards David Mitch. Doing the roving work was Tudor, shoveled away from his hands for a moment. Still on right half forward as Holt defends to the boundary line. He sees it over. And a throw in with only seconds remaining. Madden comes across to contest. This time he'll be up against a Mensch. McKay waiting down in front, so too Brown. Fraser Brown has the football, but it's quarter time. Thank you, boys. 13 points the margin as we go into the second quarter. Barnes and Madden, and it's won by the ladder. Down towards half forward, but taken away by the Cats. It's Scholl, who takes it from Couch and punches it long towards half forward. McKay spoils. Brownless roves. Billy shrugs the tackle. Gets it clear once again. Couch, can he get round onto the left foot? No, he can't. Awkwardly to the right, but it's going to be effective to Barnes. He plays on, does John Barnes. He goes for goal, but he misses to the right. In fact, just shaving the post for one behind. His first score of the day. Effective set of clearance, wasn't it, by Geelong in the finish? Two goals, the margin, and again, this rain persists. It almost, well, it threatened to clear. We're with McKay in the back pocket. Former Glenelg player in South Australia, he goes across the ground. Who's going to be first to recover, Sexton or Hickmont? It is Sexton who gets it away to Christou. Christou pumps it wide towards Kudafidis. He can't get there in time. So a throw in on the other side. Pretty much as you were from quarter time, as we look at the bench, Ken Hickley, Stephen Hanley and Aaron Lord. Craig Bradley still running with Gary Hocking. Playing almost a defender's role at the moment. Madden gets it down to the front. Brown bumped off the football by Tanner. Quite straightforwardly in the finish. Tanner's kicked the half forward. Ball spills to the front. Bradley just gets his foot to it and fortuitously lands with Clappe. Clappe's kicked towards full forward. Kernahan up in front. The ball spills to the front. Pierce gets onto his left foot. Can he kick a goal from here? He had plenty of time to steady and finished up hooking the kick a little too far. And through for a behind to the Blues. Great, great turning circle then, wasn't it, from him? It was very quick and dainty on his feet almost. He just tripped across the ground. Other players started to slip as they tried to chase him. Back to 13 points to margin. Graham's kick in is a good long one. But it's oh. brilliantly marked by Kudafidis. He is outstanding so far in the game. Goes in short. The lead is provided by Kernahan. He can't quite get there. Going through Scholl. Hand pass. Gets it back. Oh. Zasto did it on Ian Nankervis and kicked the goal. 
and it really did change the game. Jezelinko did well with Dick Clay here one day too in a grand final. Wasn't bad, Malcolm. Oh, that's four smothers I can remember. Three in the first quarter, now one in early. Four smothers in the forward line is just sensational football. And nearly always, always results in a shot at goal. What play by the Duke of Earl. So the Blues were revved up after that one. 5-6 to 2-5 if they weren't revved up already. 19 points the margin. Madden wins it. Spalding went through strongly, but it's McGrath who charges away with the football down towards his co-redhead, Hickbot. Yeah, his wonderful pair of hands, Adrian Hickbot. Just had a flat spot towards the end of the year. He's fought his way back into this side. His second and third games for the club were finals. He's going to be kicking from, well, just outside 50. He'll certainly test him. Goes deep into the square. Ablett is amongst the pack. He tries to get a boot to it. The opposing number five, McKay, is there. And he sees it over the line. So the Cats doing it in awkward fashion in behinds as uh, Diesel Williams changes boots. 2-6, plays 5-6. Yes, that middle will be very slippery now with that rain on it being hard now, a bit slippery. Silvani brings it back into play to McKay. Tucked in the back pocket. Now this is where they go over the other side now. They yep. go back the other way. And then straight down the middle to Peter Dean. Off to Christou. Just gets away from Hickmont, but is forced to go wide. Oh. Barnes backs into the pack. Here he is, Kuda Fides, streaking away. Now towards half forward. Mansfield charges out, picks it up now, goes in towards the middle. Pickering comes out to meet the football. They're in hot pursuit of him. He gives it away very, very quickly. Clapay may take advantage. Matt Clapay to half forward. A little too high for Kernahan. And Graham will tidy up for the Cats. He's going to have to be forced to kick to a no-one situation. Hannah gets back, but take the mark. Coming down the ground is Hickmont for Geelong. He's on centre wing. Hickmont goes in towards the centre of the ground. Mark is taken by Brewer in front of McKay. McKay being asked to come back on the mark. Brewer goes across the ground. Gets a little bit behind Paul Brown. He's had to wait and then take the mark and then proceed forward. He's kicking towards full forward. Gee, they teamed up on Ablett then. Chris Du and Silvani. Hand pass goes back to Ablett. Ablett's kick is high in the air. Not really all that oh. brilliant. And Silvani nearly made it. It was a top effort. He made a lot of yards to get there, Stephen Silvani. Eventually spills over for a throwing. Five, six plays, two, six. Stephen Silvani tried in vain. I it almost nearly pay that. Nearly came off his boot on the full two. Bradley tackled, brilliantly tackled by Hickmont. Brown goes in hard. Still the ball to be won. Oh, another good smother. Cooter in there for Geelong. So was Brown good in the action. Bradley, handball. Goes as far as Cooter feedings. His running skills gets him out of trouble. His kick in towards the middle of the ground. And chopping it off for the Cats is Riccardi. Peter Riccardi thought about Tanner, but goes shorter to Barnes. Back to Riccardi. He runs through the seven sports sign in the centre and blasts one to Paul Couch. Bang on the left foot, he goes back. No mark to Brownless. Hog on all fours, gets plenty of assistance from Medine. Bradley there also, and Christo close to the boundary line. Carlton Bench look on. Cavarelli as Billy Brownless swamped by players as Dean comes over the top and spoils him. Well, Madden was held onto on that occasion. McKay That's right. threw it towards Bradley. He accepted it and so too did the umpire. Sexton, a high one in towards Rice. Fisted clear, hocking a chance. Rice chases him. Hocking stabs oh. it in the half forward with that giant hand of Kudafides. It comes unstuck though. Colbert, no one home. He lopes away and even has time to put the ball to ground. It's a poor kick. He had a number of options there, and they've given it away, perhaps too easily. Pickering, a floater towards full forward. Brown was caught behind, and forced to spoil, went over the top. The advantage is paid to Bradley, and he bounces his way down through the centre, up towards half forward. Pierce tries to spoil, he can't. 
Mansfield marks strongly and plays on. Runs away from Kernahan. He's kicked towards half forward. Another good contest. Sexton does very well. The ball kicked away by Ratton in the direction of Hannah and Riccardi. Hannah goes after it. Slipping over his shoulder, but he gets the hand pass to Riccardi. Good play by the Cats across halfback. Now Graham, who kicks the ball prodigious distances, but only as far as Madden. And Big Madden sticks up those long arms of marks just wide of centre half back for the Blues. Really important move was Peter Riccardi on the wing. He's starting to get on top of Hannah now and give him some run across that midfield, which they lacked in the first quarter, as Gary Ablett comes and almost pulls up. So nothing in that. Gee, a poor kick. It's been touched off the boot. Play on. Rice to Hogg. Hogg's kicked to half forward. Clappe, good mark. Brown was only centimetres away. But Clappe affects the chest mark between wing and left half forward. The Williams lead for the moment. Ignored. Pierce charges in towards the pocket area. So he's getting his kicks wide though, isn't he? He really yeah. does lead wide, does Pierce. He's an exciting young athlete though, both he and uh, Kudafidis. He wobbles this one in towards full forward. Kernahan quite gun. Can't quite get there in time. And over it goes. Have you noticed how open the forward line is of Carlton when they move forward? Really the Carlton blokes at the bar, their back end block it up. Really open forward line, Carlton. Kernahan, Kudafidis. Kenny almost had it. Clappe close to the boundary line. He keeps it in play towards Ratton and Williams. Williams goes again for the second time. Riccardi over the top. Tunnel ball out the back. Ratton and Hannah. Caught is Mill Hannah, but he bounces off and he gets another chance. Finds Ratton. Off to Williams, back to Ratton. Like lightning into the pocket. Brown is there. But sails over his head and over the head of Lee Colbert. And that ball was very slippery then, wasn't it? Just a really bad patch. If the ball stays on the ground too long, it does get slippery. If it's been a good kick, usually it dries out a bit in the air. So the boundary throw in, Kernahan doing the ruck work, Brown gets it to Williams. Williams loves this situation. He absolutely adores it, but he misses by hitting the woodwork. And didn't he measure it off? Had a little bit uh, too much room, maybe, for a Billy Goggin. Interested on Looker. What a great player he was for Geelong and, of course, representing the state. Ben Graham kicks it to himself. Gets a few precious metres and then measures the kick beautifully and finds Riccardi. Riccardi's on the Carlton 50 metre line. Looks to play on. There's a player down here on his own in front of us. It's Tolbert. He goes from the back. Nearly takes the mark. Spalding. But it falls for Couch. Couch's kick is beautiful. Absolutely perfect. And finds Brown. He gets it to Mitch. Mitch forced to kick and measures it equally as well as Couch's earlier. And finds hit bottom centre half forward. Two magnificent kicks in that passage of play by Couch and then Mitch. And the Cats a chance to get their third goal. Hickmott. Coming up for his fifth kick. It wobbles and hits the post. So the ledger from that point of view has been squared away. The Blues have got one through Williams, a poster, and Hickmont, a poster for Geelong. 2-7 to 5-7, exactly 18 points the margin. Silvani to kick in for the Blues. He goes straight down the middle. Hocking cuts it off. Ratton defends well. Finding McKay on the other side. He chips to send a wing, and he finds Kudafidis. He's having a marvellous game. He's got it to Rice. They're charging down the ground. Peter Dean's alone, and he's sprinting now towards left half forward, the veteran. Here's Dean, 65 metres out. Passing, looking for Kernahan initially. Williams at the back, trying to spot... Oh, here's Matt. Justin Madden finds himself alone in the goal square. It's amazing, isn't it, this game of football? How could a bloke six foot 29 be alone on the ground of footy? Huge build up here. Williams does very well. Sporting again sets up the goal. And Justin Madden, he is absolutely ecstatic with that. Terrific stuff from Sporting to break through. <laughs> Justin, you can see him lick his chops. Well, some excitement there for Justin Madden. He's kicked a goal for Carlton. Halfway through the second term, Geelong have got the football around the middle of the ground. It's Brown's kick. Bounces awkwardly at half forward. Hogg misses it all together. 
Makes a contest with Brewer, then knocks it away, close to the line. It will go over, will it? Tudor and McKay, McKay makes a certainty of it. Umpire gives the all clear for a boundary throw-in. You would feel the cat supporters down there in front of that boundary umpire would have been maybe looking for a deliberate kick. Andrew McKay. I think he probably was deliberate, but he uh, should go more on the line there and not take the chance of getting pinged. Gary Hocking. His kick is high and wide. It's out of bounds on the full. The free kick to be taken for the Blues in the left back pocket by Craig Bradley. Bradley, four kicks and three handballs. The leading possession gatherer so far, Kudafidis, eight and seven. Ratton not far behind him, eight and five. Bradley's kick high. The rain has just gone away for the moment. Oh, a double tackle, Kudafidis and Williams. And uh, the player underneath there, absolutely smothered, was Pickering. Not a bad sign for the Blues. They lead 6-7 at 2-7. Yes, fantastic tackle originally by Williams, and then Kudafidis made a certainty of it. Ten and a half minutes remaining. Kudafidis again to Christou. McGrath at the back with Scholl, but there's been some holding on. And it's going to go to Spalding. He's having a very good game. He's got Rice down on half forward. And Dean Rice... Hoping to complete a triumphant return with a premiership. He is a finisher since coming back into this cup and side. It's a terrific mark, that, isn't it? Grant Tanner doesn't do anything out of the ordinary there and uh, really just tried to knock the ball away. But he is a finisher and he can kick goals. Important acquisition on the forward line for Carlton this year. He's kicked 20 goals for the season, 2015. He's kicking from 47 metres. It's a drop punt. It's high and it looks very, very good. this quarter to Geelong's nil and try to resurrect this forward line. Bill Brownless has now come out to centre half forward or Brewer to centre half forward and Mintz back in the pocket. Terrific play then from the Carlton players and a pretty honest mark from Dean Rice. Seven goals and they've all come from individuals for Carlton. So we're out to a five goal margin now. Favouring the Blues, Barnes out of the centre, taken by Hocking. He gets crunched and loses the football. A vital time now for both sides. Carlton can really set something up. Geelong have got to be very, very careful. Hogg is going to follow his man Tudor. Lee off the Tudor field. leave the ground as Handley comes back on. In fact, they are making a change. Manton's going to get a chance to go on. The Blues clear the ball from half back. Manton could get into this straight away. Provides just a little bit of a shepherd, which was all right for Hannah. And Hannah's kick finds Rice. Rice can go down the ground. That kick is a little bit of a hospital one, but Brown's able to take the mark. He's about 65 to 70 metres from goal. He could have gone for Williams. He licks to go into the pocket to the captain. And the chest mark is affected by Stephen Kernahan. Gee, another goal here would certainly be a uh, body blow for the Cats. They trail at the moment by 30 points. Kernahan can stretch it to 36. Good lead by Kernahan, and he wasn't let down by the delivery. Kernahan's kick. Gee, it looks pretty good. No, it's just off to the left. And through for his first behind, and Carlton's eighth. Yeah, very difficult angle. Actually, Greg Williams made a good lead late then, but I think he was committed to the kick. Brown has it at half-back. There's wide to Mansfield. And Michael Mansfield. All-Australian player kicks long towards centre wing. Barnes was in front, but it's fisted clear. Kudafidi's waiting down in front. Gives it to Christo, who pumps it long and high. To Kernahan again. One, two rounds to Sticks. If you're, not, if you're going to play from behind Stephen Kernahan all day, there will be a time that he'll outmark you. Because he does jump honestly. Ben Graham doesn't do a lot wrong. Can't get at it. And he just got off the ground enough. And he will take marks. He's a great player. Kernahan for his second. It looks good. Carlton love it. He becomes the first multiple scorer. Angst Christou's running from half back then. 
was just brilliant. Kuda Foodies was great. And this man, the finisher, just toppled it off beautifully. See that bit of jump? He is a tall man when he's like that. Williams right there to help. Terrific stuff. Carlton doing it in bursts. Three goals in five minutes. And now the danger signs up for the Cats. And again, some uh, double and triple tackling there provided by Carlton players on Paul Couch. Tim McGrath moved to centre-half forward. They really are desperate. Matt has gone back with him. So the bounce just uh, forward of the centre. Madden to the back. Hickmott gets a kick. Doesn't quite go as far as Geelong would have desired. McKay to Bradley. Bradley out of the congestion. And a mark taken by Clappe. And again, Brown was only centimetres away. But he couldn't do much. Clappe gets it to Christou. Christou's kick off his left foot. Not too bad. Into the pocket. Rice has a chance to mop up. A free kick isn't too high on the player going for the mark, which looked as though it was Pierce. And Pierce has the football. Now, this would be some sort of a kick. Now, he goes in short, looks for Kernahan, and falls to the back. Spalding, Kernahan gets his left foot to it. Not far enough. Taken by Scholl. Hand pass Tanner. Tanner further across the fullback line. Barnes, no one to kick to. Gives the hand pass away. Goes back to Scholl. Williams nearly to run him down, but he gets his kick away. In towards the centre half back region, and the mark is taken by Colbert. Lee Colbert, just a youngster. Kicks the ball long towards half forward. Out comes Matt. There's some positive football. The player's only been on the ground for a minute and a half, and he's taken a mark in front of McGrath. He goes wide to Rice. Rice starting to get a bit of the football. That's Kenny Hickley time. Do some magic up forward. The kick in short. Pierce provides the lead. Mansfield gets his hand to it and takes it over. 50 metres from Carlton's goal. The Blues lead 8 8. Geelong 2 7. Under six minutes remaining in the first half. Handley leans into it. Clapay has the ball held to him. He's slung to the ground. And there is Ken Hinckley. Who's coming now? But well, he's going to take off. He actually, the runner's just gone to Tim McGrath. Perhaps the back to the back line and take one of the back line players off. Spalding tries to swipe it. The couch has a chance. Back to Spalding again, who's working hard looking for Brown. Taken over the line. Just just moving, limp. Just moving a little gingerly. I don't know whether that gamble's paid off. It's at nine positions, Brownie. Handley again in front. Spalding at the back. Bratton hurriedly. Rice chases. Almost going by a free kick to Mansfield for holding. Kernahan plays on. He bends it back to Sticks and he's got his third. Well, I honestly thought then that Michael Mansfield perhaps could have got a free kick. Appeared to be retarded as he went for the footy. And Stephen Kernahan, I oh, let him go. It was probably a line baller. And Stephen Kernahan just bent it back beautifully on his left foot. Great shot from behind the goals, and Stephen Kernahan is very, very happy indeed. Nine eight to two seven, and Bradley gets it out of the centre towards half forward. Away goes Brown. He's whacked in the face, but uh, in tr true style, he went straight after it and kicked it to Colbert. Colbert's on the wing. He goes short and finds Pickering. Pickering able to size it up, then kicks towards half forward. The ball to the back of the pack. Chance here for Brewer. Hasn't had much of the football. Little kick. Manton gets his right foot to it. And McKay again goes for the line. Silvani. Hand pass down the line. This is Gary Hockey. Little kick in towards the middle. Barnes to Brownless. What can they manufacture? Couch. Must get this if Geelong are to be a chance. And Couch, he dobs it from 35. Pretty good kick by Couch in the finish to get his first goal in Geelong's third. And just keep them close enough. Six goals won, 37 points. Well, it's a margin. It is indeed. Actually, uh, interesting play here from uh, Silvani leading up to it. He went for the boundary line, it just didn't quite get over. And then terrific backup play from Paul Couch and slots the first goal of this quarter. And as you said, Ed, very much needed now. They need a couple in a hurry to get right back in this game. Let's see what they can do from the centre. Carlton rip it away. 
Down the wall, it's hard forward. It came from Ratton, and there's going to be a free kick to Pierce. 45 out directly in front. Well, Kenny Hinckley on the ground up forward, and uh, Tim McGrath's got back on Rice. And you'd have to say that was over the shoulder, in the back, and pretty crude. Free kick? Most definitely. Quite comprehensive, in other words. So, Pierce, who kicked one in the first quarter, hoping to answer the couch goal. He kicks from 47 metres. He kicks truly. Carlton have the answers at the moment. Yes, wonderful kick then from Brad Pierce. And Brett Bratton has had 16 possessions and we've still got just under four minutes to go before half time. He gets the hard ones. He's a beautiful style of a kick, isn't it? Most left footers are, but he is a classical left foot kick. And Stephen Kernahan clapped that a long way from home. Very important centre break here for Geelong. They trail now by 43 points, four minutes left. And they're going to get the centre break they were looking for. Pickering to count. She's tackled. Gets the hand pass away. Hinkley in the action. Pickering's kick is short and good. Finds Riccardi. A stretching kick for Riccardi. 50 metres. He's kicked one of Geelong's three goals at this stage. Ablett providing the lead. He goes short. He's still 50 metres away, but this is Brewer now. So no closer. Improves the angle a little bit. About Brewer Melbourne, can he kick the distance? He, his very best kick would make it, but he, he... well, we'll soon see. Gets underneath it a little bit, it'll land near the goal line. Gee, there's a big pack of players. Brownless was up high, Kudafidis close to the line, knocks it down towards Williams. Williams goes wide, the race is on here. Brown and Bradley, Bradley gets in, Brown gathers the football, then sweeps the hand pass to Brownless. Brownless will kick to the square. Silvani, back goes Madden, nearly the mark to Mitch. The Blues may force it over for a rush behind. It is in the finish, and not a bad result for Carlton. Geelong fans may be thinking that that could have been paid. See, their defence has been terrific, Carlton, hasn't it? They haven't given any easy goals yet to the Geelong team. Manton runs it out towards Hannah and Riccardi. The latter marks. He's got on top there and he gives it across to Pickering from 55 metres. Pickering goes in towards full forward, but Matten cuts it over the line. Conceding one behind. It's Hinkley and Bradley. Hinkley coming off the bench. Chris Du, however, has the football in the back pocket. Again to Matten. He looks towards Spalding and Hanley, and it's Hanley who thumps it over the line. Interesting ploy that last ruck bounce, which actually Geelong won. Hanley came into the centre, and Barnes went came from centre half back. Quite an interesting ploy, just to try and upset Matt. Geelong bench looking a little despondent as Riccardi flicks it towards Hocking. He got a bit of a nudge as he took the kick back in towards the centre. Good shepherding sees Colbert take the mark courageously too. Hocking. Almost caught his teammate Brown unawares, but he just recovered well. Brown kicks in towards Harford. No one there. Peter Dean caught. Too high. Too high. So high. What did you think, Melbourne? Well, it didn't appear high from here, but with perhaps in a, you know, I mean, it was high. The umpire was right there. Madden is too tall for Pickering. Speaking of height, McKay is good to Williams. Off to Ratton, who's been busy now. Hannah. Couch intercepts towards Riccardi. Hocking on all fours. He crawls towards it. Pickering helps him out. Stabs into the pocket. Oh. And an effective spoil by Peter Dean. Sees it over the line. Oh, that's the want. Oh, I mean, that was sensational. Here's the free kick replay. As Shane Brewer comes at him, he actually does grab him from behind the neck and around the neck. So, pretty Left good call. Up. Yes, those umpires, gee whiz, if all the crowd could see a, a replay of it, Sandy, they wouldn't be booing too much, would they? That was a very distinct free kick to Peter Dean. Free and kicks are 16 to 6 in favour of the Blues. And Camp, Camp really on as we watch David Parker. He's made the move, he's put him onto Peter Riccardi. Hannah's just quietened off with Riccardi on in this quarter. Ruck contest. Dean gets into the middle of the action again. Knocks it close to the line. Ratton 
tries to get a few metres towards goal. Brown get, gets out of trouble. He's a clever player. The kick towards the half-forward area. Getting at the back was Riccardi. Does well to get it through Camparelli. 50 metres from goal. This will be a good kick. It swings around and hits the post. You wouldn't believe it. If you sat behind this and you're a Geelong fan, you would have bled for five minutes. 10-8 to 3-10. Carlton lead by 40 points. Inside the last minute of the first half. Christou towards Sexton and oh. Madden and a good mark by Sexton. Stood his ground as the galloping hordes came at him. He gives it away to Williams. And the dual Brownlow medalist kicks in towards the centre where Spalding takes the mark. Looks to get past Handley. It's not a good kick. Bocky to Brownless. The Cats had loved one before the siren sounds. Pickering almost caught by McKay. Gets his kick towards Ablett and Silvani. Ablett in front but couldn't take it. Dean again defends as if his life depended upon it. And we'll have a throw in. Watch it. Just yes. seconds left. One on one defence. Fantastic from Carl. Throw in again. Barnes, Madden, Mench and Dean just floating into the pack. Madden got it to Williams. Pressure on Kudafidis, who's been sensational. Christo, also excellent as the siren sounds. He gets ridden into the ground. Campbell Billy. Still a half of football to go. And the last thing we want is a melee. But that looks as though it's what we've got. They're coming from everywhere on the outer side in front of the southern stand. Blues would do well to get out of this, I think. We've got nothing to gain, I don't think. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, neither side's got anything to gain. Well, Geelong maybe because they trail so dramatically. 3-10 to 10 goals, 8. So here we go, the second half. Carlton by 40 points. And once they get their noses in front, they're a very hard nut to crack. Free kick already. Now yeah, out of the centre. Kick. Lee Colbert. Williams to take it. And that's why. So Williams floats one down towards the 50. Mansfield defends for the Cats. Imperative they get the first couple to try and get back into this game. Riccardi floats it over the top to Pickering, who's got a bit of time. He chips up towards half forward. Hickmon on the last line. Colbert there as well. Peter Dean with him over the line. Gee, they've made a lot of changes, Geelong. Colbert's now gone into the middle on to Williams. Brewer's gone on to Kuda Foodies. Lord's back on the ground on to Ratton. And Mansfield's been brought out the halfback flank on to Rice. Mench starting on the bench. Good smother. And again couple of smothers in the first half are an absolute feature. None better than Spaulding's. Here's Riccardi, the lightning left footer. In towards full forward to Brownless. Off the ground, Billy into the post. Pretty smart thinking, really. Gee, you're not going to win the game if you do that, though. He's firstly got his foot to the ball. If you're going to win, it goes through for a goal, doesn't it? Yeah, I huh? suppose so. Pretty smart thinking, though, wasn't it? Oh, you terrific wouldn't, stuff. You wouldn't believe you could miss from a metre out, but I've seen it happen before. Bradley has the football from the kick in. Bradley in the right back pocket. 10 8 to 3 11. Blues lead. 10 possessions to Craig Bradley. Now he runs on. Umpire gives him the all clear. This kick has got to have the right penetration. It has. Back to the centre of the ground. A very good kick. Dean beaten for it. Still the ball there to be won around the middle. Spalding after Handley. Handley across his left shoulder. Not bad either. Gets 45 metres out towards the wing. Chris Dew and Hickbot. Hickbot tries to knock it on, not successful. It goes over for a throw. David Mitch having a spell at the start of the third quarter. Bobby Rose in the background and the Brownlow medalist of 1995, Paul Kelly in the middle of the picture. It's been a wonderful week for him. Here's Madden in front of Barnes. It comes over the back. A chance now for Tanner, who took it from Brewer back to Barnes. The whistle is sounded hot. Started on the bench. 
Kicks into half forward, over the head of Barnes. Mansfield, one of the flyers, but Manton backs into the pack. Too strong, and they're going to be tough now, Carlton, as Sexton streams down the half-back line. Kicks it wide in front of the sprinting Pierce. McGrath tries to take him out, but he's got plenty of backup support. He'll need it, though, as Riccardi steps in. Peter Riccardi chips to centre wing and couch. The Brownlow medalist of 89 goes up to half forward. Billy Brownless has been desperately quiet. They need something special from him. 75 from home. He goes towards Ablett. They've smothered him today. And Dean again defends over the line for another throw in. To yeah, the courage for one bloke, Peter Dean, isn't it? Yeah, it's a fantastic play, but uh, pretty predictable, isn't it? A lot of the kicks going to Ablett and double teaming him. There are other players up there. Boundary throw in Tanner dispossessed. Brown with the football. Well tackled, and the umpire will bounce about 30 metres from the Geelong goal. 10 8 to 3 11, just one point added so far in this third term, and that was to Geelong. Madden in front, the ball spills to the back. Opportunity for Hinkley, can't get that hand pass away. Christou goes back towards the line. Ratton, his kick smothered off the boot, and it's against Geelong again. So nothing happening for the Cats. Ratton gives away a hand pass. Bradley runs away from fullback. Kicks out wide. Good play by Spalding. Got rid of Handley. Riccardi's done a hamstring. It's not happening for Geelong. Rice gives it away. McKay is on the end of the hand pass. Geelong in all sorts of trouble. Let's have a look at Riccardi. The kick goes to the 50 metre line. Williams on McGrath. McGrath gets the hand pass away. As far as Handley. Handley back onto his right foot. Kicks it long and high out towards the wing. At the back, Mansfield does well. Takes the mark over McKay. As Robbo said, Riccardi in deep trouble. He's going to be leaving the ground with a hamstring. Mansfield's kicked the half forward. Barnes edged out. Kudafidis. Oh, but he's smothered again. Peter Dean. Sensational play. And away comes the veteran defender. He charges forward. Riccardi lips off the ground. Himself. He's there for half an hour. Williams goes back now from 55. He's still there anyway. Ten uh, metres in the clear. Tragedy for Peter Riccardi, but uh, great play from Peter Dean. Peter Dean just sensational with that try to that chip from Barnes. Keep your eye on the footy, angle your hands, and Carlton are the best in the league at it. Must have been this year to get into this situation. He's kicked three in the first half, two of those in the second quarter. There's another one to the Blues. Oh, a wonderful rebound play from that man. First goal after half time, always crucial. And the Blues withstood that pressure. Sulfani, Dean, here we see John Barnes go back. And the kick just coming across. And everybody out of position. And what was interesting here, it was a great chip kick to Williams. Most important, the bloke running with the footy uses the footy well. Kernahan, the goal kicker, he's kicked four. The Blues lead 11-8 to 3-11, and Gary Ayres has some thinking to do. Geelong go forward. Gatherers by Pickering. Hand pass a little sloppy. Hannah may be there to mop it up. Bradley, hand pass. Well done, Ratton. Ratten off that right foot, kicks into the pocket. Pierce gets rid of his opponent. Gee whiz, if Geelong watch this go sailing through, there'll be some ordinary looks on their faces, but it's a poor kick by Pierce. And registers just a behind. Yeah, two Dean, goals, two. Dean on now on Pickering. Let's go down to the boundary line. Peter Riccardi, Dipper, has he gone? Yeah, he's gone. Uh, Sandy Boys have caught it right. Hamstring injury. The doctors are trying to work on him, but I don't think we'll get him back on the ground. Oh, tragedy for Riccardi. Good hands too close, isn't it? Put up 
the fist. Weasel put up his Diesel put up his hand and uh, took a great mark. He looks as though he may be uh, favouring his left arm. Is he there down there? No. 81 plays 29. Madden gets his left fist to it. Brown, Madden with the left foot. Spalding crashes through, then gets the hand pass away, but only as far as Barnes. Barnes kicks down the ground to half forward, but a good mark taken by Chris Du. Gee, the body language is looking very good now for Carl. The kick by Chris Du, out wide for Silvani. Can he outrun Ablett? He knocks it clear. Ablett keeps his footing. Very important, well done. Gets it to Brewer. Brewer's gone. The hand pass was ordinary. Back in goes Kudafidis. Gathers the football. Just a little kick was to the benefit of Madden. There's a free kick behind play. It's against Kudafidis, and it will go to Brewer for Geelong. Didn't quite see what happened there, but Brewer has the free kick. He can go short. Handley has made good position. One bounce. He runs down to half forward. Looks to give the hand pass. McKay's got him. Hand pass. Falls at the feet. Well done, Andrew McKay. The Blues doing everything right in the early part of the third term. Dean gets in there to congratulate his teammate. Kuda Fides, we have a look at why the free kick was given to Brewer. Really well over him, got him high in. An indiscretion against Kuda Fides, one of his rare indiscretions so far in the game. Madden, too much height for Barnes, Ratton towards the centre wing. Spalding leads in the race for the ball. He's taken over the line by Shane Rowe. Yes, that is, a, that is the correct decision, because you must make some attempt, and he didn't, even though he went towards the boundary line. So he's picked the holding it. And he goes short to tap. Gee, Carlton's defence has been sensational, hasn't it? Dean, Chris Du, McKay, Silvani, Sexton. Restricted Geelong so far to just 3-11. Yes, you don't get a, a better half-dozen than that. The defence is outstanding. Apple, well, he can't get a sniff. Dean again defends. Extremely well to Hannah on the other side. Bradley, Bradley. Up towards centre wing. Coming a long way out is Steve Bradley. A floater, finds Sexton, almost down to right half forward. Carlton dominating now as Pierce flies, so too does McGrath, unable to take the mark. Bradley waits down, his 70 out, hooks it round his body towards Spalding and Hadley. Hadley comes over the top, fists it towards the boundary line. Pierce gives Quick. chase, he's under pressure from young Ben Graham, and it's over the line. My word, he got there quickly. That was super. My word, yep. So, a black day for the Cats and uh, one of the legends of the game. He wore number five with great distinction. Graham Polly Farmer would be bitterly disappointed to see this. It's not over yet as Brown charges forward. So too Handley gives it away to Hocking. Hocking on halfback goes back to Brown. And Brown will clear towards centre wing and Barnes. And Barnes has the football for Geelong. Goes in towards half forward. Too high. McKay then a up for the Blues. He can go to Kudafidis. Out in front. You would think he's got the chance to outrun Brewer, but Brewer applies the tackle, then gets after the football. Kudafidis and Brewer. Brewer and Kudafidis, look at the struggle. The two players and Kudafidis quite prepared to knock it over for a throw in. Right, that's what you have to do, yeah, that's what you have to do now at Geelong. It's just do those one on one contests well. And that was just fantastic. Boundary throw in, centre wing, Madden and Barnes. Madden. Tried to get it down to Ratton. Ratton in underneath. Can't get the ball clear. Oh, Couch just kicks. Smothered by Dean again. Clappe, short one. Dean's on it. Can he kick a goal? Peter Dean. He's dumped after he kicked the football. It may go through. It's marked by Williams. He's going to get the goal anyway. Greg Williams has got it for the Blues.
It'll come way back to the center and Grant Tanner. It's interesting. Why does sometimes that penalty is 50 meters when the player kicks the ball? Yeah, they've, they've actually put that away a bit to the. You know, I mean, players can't hear the whistle sometimes. You've got to believe that. Tudor goes on with it now, just forward of the middle. Pickering shrugs the rice tackle, gives it back towards Hinkley, who kicks it long and high towards Hamlet. Got a hand to it, but that was all. McKay gives it away to Christou, and this rock-solid defence will clear again. There's none more miserly in the league. He whoops it towards centre wing. Safety. As McKay, Sexton and Brownless lock arms. Barnes comes in to make a foursome. But the game goes on. That's how it started. Nothing in it. As we go back to the action, Clapper has eyes for the football and he comes courageously into the pack. Spalding got a bad bounce. Couch a good one. Just flings his boot to it but finds Barnes. He's still forward of the 50. Now passes in towards the forward pocket region. He wanted Abel. Silvani's too good. Away he comes. Two bounces to Stephen Silvani. Gets to half back. Then kicks to the middle of the ground. Carlton on the end of this one. Clapay off the left foot. Clapay looks for Kernahan. It covers that player. And his opponent, Graham. In goes Colbert. Williams keeps his footing. Can he gather the ball? He knocks it to the favour of Kernahan. Kernahan, very difficult ball to grasp but ground level. Ben Graham gets his left foot to it. Kicks it down towards the wing. Leading in the race for the ball is Tanner. He gathers and then kicks high. Indiscriminately, he's dumped by Brown and the free kick will go down the ground to a Brewer at right half forward for the Cats. Yes, really Brown. Didn't need to do that, did he? Uh, a little bit soft, but anyway, it was for the free kick. Hickbot goes into the pocket. Ablett slips over. In goes Christou to make the contest with Pickering. The ball to the front of the goals. Back goes Manton and Hinkley. Hinkley falls over, gets the hand pass back. Sexton and Chris do a little bit of misunderstanding. Sexton's in there, and he locks it up for the Blues in the left back pocket. They lead 13-9 to 3-11, and we've got nine minutes left in the third term. Blues have scored three goals this quarter. The Cats haven't been able to score one. Look at this defence again as Christo goes charging away to Hannah. Tudor gives chase, but Hannah gets his kick towards Clapper, who's down on right half forward. Down into the danger zone, he swings. At the back is Kernahan. Goes over the top, almost gave away the free kick on Colbert. And eventually the umpire said he did. The rebounding of the defenders has just been sensational, hasn't it? They really have raffled it at the back. Hard to get a kick in the Geelong forward line. Certainly has been today. Yes. Colbert goes towards Hickman. He runs out of half back, converts to centre wing, and Couch calls out Barnes. The ever miserly McKay on the mark. As he kicks towards Hocking, who flicks it back inside to Mansfield, still outside 50. Now he pokes it in towards full forward, but it goes over the line. That's the desperation of Dean again, just to get that little push on, and that really makes a difference. A couple of changes being made. As the whistle is sad, it's going to come back. Camarelli's come onto the ground, so to the shot. Sexton brings oh. it back into play. The big hands of Kudafides. You mentioned that low scoring. The Cats' last goal at the 22 minute mark of the second quarter. It's been a long time between drinks. But Carlton will be hoping to celebrate Greg Williams' birthday tonight with a few if they continue in this vein. Clapay gathers the football, had a second go at it. Got it back to Pierce. Pierce from the left foot. Usually pretty good. Towards full forward. Madden was in the action. The ball spills. Camparelli! Snapshot by Camparelli! It's home! Camparelli kicks his first 
goal. The Blues get their 14. They're 14 9 to 3 11. And it's somewhat of a massacre in the 1995 grand final. The Blues fans with plenty to cheer about, but the Cats fans have been left lamenting. There's a great contest there, and Hattery Matt does it well. And Camparelli, with great poise for the youngster, so he is absolutely delighted. First goal in a grand final. 29 plays 93. Carlton have kicked nine out of the last ten. And Madden sends them forward again towards Kernahan. Can't take the mark, but Graham has claimed. Look at the tackling by Sticks. He gives it away. This could result in another one. Still locked inside 50. Brown gives the hand pass away. Pierce has a snap. It wobbles off the side of the boot in towards the right forward pocket region. And it is there that Tudor is bumped over the line. The football spills free. And a throw in to take place. At the other end of the ground, Brewer's gone back to centre half forward as we look at Mel Hatter. And Pickering now gone on to Cooter Foodies on the wing. Just over six minutes of this third quarter remaining. A term that has been dominated by Carlton. And they're setting something up here. In towards full forward over the top of Hadley came the kick from Ratton. And it results in one behind. In a sensational team effort from the Blues today. 14-10 plays 3-11. DeLong have added one behind for the quarter. Well, I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the smart people thought that Carlton's defence would hold them in great stead, but gee whiz, this is just absolutely perfect football in a grand final. The kick back to the centre of the ground. They're going to force it forward again here. Dean Rice gets the handball. Madden! Gee whiz, he'll be happy about this. The kick goes up and under. Towards full forward. In front was Clappe. Couldn't take the mark. The ball bashed back towards half-back. Scholl and his four Geelong. A long hand pass out wide to Brown. Gets it to Tudor. Camparelli the chaser. Tudor's kick goes very wide. Slipping over out there was Hickmott. Christou keeps his footing. Very important in today's football. Camparelli back to Christou. They love him to finish. His kick towards half forward being marked by Williams. And Williams with three goals against his game, against his name. And a premiership medal with two Brownlow medals staring him in the face. You'd have to say he's a chance to kick a goal here. Greg Williams. Yes, the kick actually wobbled. Shaw went to go back for it. And, uh, Williams, champions read it quicker. Amazing. Hand to foot, eye coordination, just quicker than average. And pretty good stats too. 19 possessions. Going for his fourth goal. Such a professional. That kick floats and floats offline. Three goals, one. Players over four to, uh, over ten possessions. Yeah, coaches' boxes we look on. Carlton have had 14 players with over ten. Geelong seven. Hanley unable to take it on the half volley. He's in trouble towards Lord. Sneaks it away to Shaw, who runs down towards the centre wing. Couch claim. Carlton hunting in packs. McKay still controls the football. He was surrounded by three and still got away with it. Christy to Rice. Pushed off the football by Mansfield. He keeps it in play, but only as far as Christou. Got a hand to it. Now Hickmont stabs into half forward. Brownless takes the mark. And he's been very, very quiet today, has Billy Brownless. Yeah, you also got to say that he hasn't been down there a lot. This is his 10th position, Sandy. Yep. So, you know, he's taken five marks. I mean, I don't think he's been the poorest player. Well, that, that much noise against him, to be honest. Rice coming off for one hit. Brownless from just inside 40. And away to the right. So white hit on for Carlton. They've still got Hock to come on too with more legs, so and looking and very ominous. A real go. He hasn't missed a game this year. They've asked for more pace, Carlton. They've certainly got it. Silvani brings it back into play to Dean. The two veterans in that back line, and there are none better. Well, Dean, he missed out a couple of years ago, but uh, gee whiz, he's going to have a big night tonight, I would think. A short kick marked by Sexton. It's a pity that you have to talk like this, and we've still got minutes left in the third term, but they're just playing so ordinary football, Geelong. 
The kick forward by Mansfield. Drops at the feet of Ablett. Ablett's left foot snapshot. Smothered off the boot. It goes to Brown as he's in the square. He must kick a goal for Geelong and he does. Yeah, it's a lot of hard work from the Geelong Football Club. Got four goals in the grand final. Who would have thought of this? The, free, the free scoring side throughout the year. Abbott got it round. On good days, I've seen him kick those, but it just bobbled into the goal square, and Billy made sure of it by kicking it into about the 25th tier. So, a much needed goal from the Cats. Can we find something else with inside of themselves to lift? So, the football being uh, confiscated by a member of the crowd down at the main scoreboard into the ground. Rice off the ground with Hawk. Oh, and Geelong get their fourth goal through Brownless. Bradley misses it all together. He's got another chance though. Handball to no one in particular, but the bounce all important. It goes back Carlton's way. Barnes gets it wide. Williams beaten for it by Tudor. Tudor across half back. The hand pass just sits for Tanner. Tanner goes to Tudor again. He was instrumental in that passage of play. In goes McKay. Can he get past Couch? He goes after it again. Desperate stuff by McKay. That has been the trademark of the Carlton performance. Bradley's kick. Williams there. Right in front. 20 metres out. And Rick Williams for, I would say, half a fleeting second. Maybe thought of the hand pass to Kurt Hand. And I think that's the difference of the two sides. That kicking mainly into the forward line. The best two kicks in Geelong are Hocking and Couch. And they just haven't got enough of the footy in that environment. Williams to kick his fourth goal. And he's successful. And three goals for the quarter for Greg Williams. It was a marvellous return from this dominant Carlton side as they have been all year. And surely the Geelong fans are now very, very disappointed about this. But it's been some sensational play from Carlton. The hardness around the middle. Mackay was just sensational. Wanted it more than anybody. And Bradley just sized his kick up, saw Williams run to the hole, and such a beautifully weighted kick, and Greg Williams did the rest. Happy birthday, Greg Williams. 32 today. He's going to be celebrating in more ways than one tonight. A couple of changes being made. Mitch also coming back out onto the ground. For Scholl. As we go back into the centre. Brown towards half forward. Carlton into attack again. Paul Brown defends. He's ripped off the football, however. They're still charging at it. Spalding and Williams both down there. Look at Earl Spalding. Here comes Williams. He's got four. Goes underground with the hand pass. Gives it away towards Hogg, who's back on the ground. Camparelli couldn't take it. Williams again. He gives it to Pierce. Onto the right boot goes Brad Pierce. Average by nine points. 
this is their biggest loss. This is going to be the biggest loss by trillion times bigger than that. <laughs> well, amazing. Maybe, but still, the game has got a little bit to uh, to go. Barnes, left foot kick, not bad. Finds Handley. Handley in the middle of the ground. Hooks his kick wide. The ball sits at the feet there of Mansfield. He does well in the finish. Gathers and kicks with his right foot to half forward. And the mark is taken by Pickering. Pickering is only about 30 metres out directly in front. He's been quite productive for the Cats, 14 and 7. And affected two tackles. Yeah, it's pretty regulation, Mark. And Christo just helped into the ground a bit. So the margin at the moment is 65 points. Pickering can bring it back to 59. He kicks for goal. And he has put it through. Yes, it's an amazing scoreline. And Gary Ayres, Michael Tuck, Paul Armstrong. Look on. Jeff Keeshan there as well. And his kick missed Mansfield, but it was good enough to come back. Mick Mansfield stuck some pretty good stuff in this quarter. He's been one of the few really good Geelong players in this quarter. Trying to get them going, trying to run down. And Leon Pickering grabbed the mark. 59 points the margin. Handley out of the centre. Geelong go down towards Ablett. And the siren beats him. That's a miserable looking scoreline for the Cats. So here we go. It's the final quarter of the 95 Grand Final. Carlton a 16-11. Geelong 6-12. They lead by a tick under 10 goals. Handley out of the middle. Mansfield went through without the football. He'll get another chance, however. Flicking it round his body towards half forward and Mitch marks in front. In front of the miserly Peter Dean. Gave him plenty of attention, so Bench just gave it away to Couch. He's got to give it back to him again. The defence has just hassled them all day, right from the opening bounce. Judah passes into half forward, poorly, and Holt takes the mark. They'll get 50 metres as well. So suddenly they're well out of defence, and Carlton are going to be charging into attack. Yes, that is just absolute frustration. It really doesn't make much at this stage, does it? Pretty lousy 50 metres, too. Yes, you not good real estate there, Kernahan. Marks just outside 50. He's been good, Sandy. I mean, I think he's uh, he set the scene very early. You can see the determination written all over his face when he led that side onto the ground. Yeah, it was a pretty good kick from Hogg, up and under. And Kernahan, just that metre, been Graham unable to get there. Well, I'm sure he more than anyone remembers the feeling in 87. He captained the side. He won their club championship award and he topped their goal kicking in that year. And he's going to lead them today. But that kick is away to the left. Sadly, out of bounds on the floor. Geelong get the ball back towards the half back area. Tanner has taken the mark, gets the hand pass to Hinkley. Hinkley back to Tanner. Tanner goes down the wing. No one home for Geelong and Bradley marks from behind Hockney. And you would think that Bradley has probably had the better of that. Positions. Bradley with 16 plus a goal. Bradley gets a 50 metre penalty. Hocking rather. Well, in the finish, there wasn't much in it. But the, uh, the blow that he may have attempted to throw a little earlier than that, the umpire may have seen. But Bradley with the 50 metres. What a great move. He's, he's been playing halfback flank as well. What great discipline from this great player. Yes, I agree with you, Malcolm. I think uh, that this, uh, this player in the 21 Guernsey. Well, that was the one that uh, perhaps the umpire saw, but uh, a couple of others were hit and misses. But Bradley, he has been a terrific player. Over 200 games, hasn't missed many in his entire career. And that kick is a goal. So well done to Craig Bradley. He's now kicked two. But the first goal of the last term sets the Blues onto a, a big victory here in the grand final of 1995. Yes, and that free kick, uh, it's Michael Mansfield and now Gary Hocken giving away free kicks at the start of this last quarter. And, and I suppose if there was any hope, you, you probably, if at all possible, should try and avoid that. I mean, it, it really doesn't do much for the game at this stage. 113 
plays 48. Madden again. Mitch gets the hand pass, sweeping wide to try and accommodate Pickering. Under plenty of pressure from Kudafidis. Hocking hurriedly gets boot the ball down towards right half forward. Hickmont takes a strong mark. Still outside 50. They're attacking four A's have been few and far between. Hocking marks. Passes again. Pickering. risen from the ashes after playing a handful of games over five years at North Melbourne. Centering kick, but it's marked by Manton. Everything going with Carlton at the moment. He can come wide to Silvani, who in turn has players streaming down the ground alone. Sexton's alone. Camarelli's alone. The pair all combined. Defence charges into attack. The pass goes down towards full forward. Kernahan will give it to Williams. He blazes in the goal and he kicks it. Goal number five for Diesel Williams. Oh, great team play. Just sensational team play from Carl. They are really a class act. The season of 95 has been one of the great seasons of all time. Hey, He's committed side. Stephen Counterhand with the body beautifully. And then Williams just chipped it underground. Five goals and a very impressive performance from Greg Williams. Williams five goals. Blues 18-11. Geelong 6-12. Mansfield dispossessed. Handley dispossessed. Ball spills to Camarelli. You have a goal all day, son. He's dispossessed himself. Couch goes down the ground. Man goes out to give Sexton a hand on Brownless, but Brownless gathers. Hand pass for Aaron Lord. Lord, nearly run down by a hole. Lord goes for goal, and he's missed. Just off to the right. His first score for the day are behind. 6.13 to 18.11. It has been a debacle. Peter Dean, what a grand player he has been for the Carlton Football Club. Ken Hickley off the great shot. Terrific calling. He called them down into the pocket. Then he kicked over the top to Spalding. Spalding at half back. Kicks across his body. Down towards half forward. Ratton probably will allow him to go over. He does. For a boundary throw in a long way away from the danger zone now for the Blues. Lofts him. The Jack O'Toole of Carlton. Wes Lofts. Sitting there with a big smile there. From the throw in. The brown hand pass is smothered. Barnes soccers off the ground towards McKay. Tunnels it out the back door, but it's taken by Tanner, who sweeps it over the top. Hogg will apply the pressure on Mansfield. Couch to try and keep it in. He does. Weaves one over the top towards Mitch. Close to the boundary line and taken over by Hogg. Continual pressure all day. Yes, indeed it is. And there's David Parker looking on. Pretty proud of what's going on out there today. Ken Judge also there. Is his senior coaching career about to start in the next week or so? Time will tell. Tanner over the top. Gee, there's some keenness there, isn't it? They lead by 72 points or thereabouts. They're still lousy. Mr. Grant really promised so much in the start, didn't he? The cup just squeezed the life out of it. Dean comes over the top. Hasn't this bloke been terrific too the whole year? Yeah. And Madden has the free kick. Is that 14 position, Sandy? Quite well. I'll have to give the votes too for this Norm Smith medal. It's getting harder by the minute, but I can assure you, they're all Carlton players that I'm looking at. Mansfield from 60 metres. Kicks it high towards full forward, a big pack of players. Waiting down is Crystal, and he did it beautifully to McCann. Quick twist, and then they're away towards Kudafidis. Look at that. Just too good. Good shepherding by Bradley. And Kuda to half forward. Out comes Kernahan. Graham is there. He chanced his arm and went. And almost got away. But Kudafidis again. Look at the way he does it with the one hand. Kernahan from 55. Goes for home. Diesel's there. He's 
got to be a couple. McGrath cuts across in front, and he steadies and defends towards Barnes on the half-back flank. Good kick by McGrath in the finish to find Barnes. Barnes' has left foot kick two. Across to the centre, Graham fumbles, may get caught, handball, indirect, clap A, Kernahan, Brown, cut this off, Fraser Brown, have a shot at goal, left foot, and he misses, only just. His first reaction though was to look to the middle, Williams just couldn't go on and find enough space, so then he ducked the player and just missed. Lee Colbert. About to come back onto the ground at the expense of Scholl. And Ben Graham kicks it to himself and runs away from the square. 71 points the margin. McKay couldn't take it, but good work by Clap to hold. It's a high kick into half forward. The pack's there. Rat first to it. He was held. The umpire calls play on. There they go again. Spalding pops it over the top. They've got the numbers everywhere. Williams again, steps one in the full board. Kernahan will shoot for number five. Williams already has five, and he's given a few away. Great play here, great pressure again from the Carlton players, great sharing of the footy, and Williams already got five, but still thinks team, and gives it to the skipper. And he now has joined him with five goals. Uh, Judith Foodies 
was just terrific here. Had a quiet third quarter. His first half was great. What wonderful skills. And uh, we think back to that Bears game, and we said at the time that perhaps they were the best going around towards the end of the year. May have been true. Hundred and thirty-two plays, forty-nine. The Blues go into attack once again. A crash there. Colbert gets it back. Williams. Oh, he would have loved that, wouldn't he? Well, he had half an hour too. <laughs> Six goals against his game in a grand final. But uh, left wondering about that one. Bill Hanna on the boundary line. Lord marks the kick in. Still Williams and Kernahan with five goals apiece against their name. Tanner. Just wide of centre half back. Hand pass over the top to Tudor. Tudor goes wide towards half forward. Minch marks in front of Kudafidis. Kudafidis sensation. Hand pass by Minch finds Tudor. Tudor goes high. The kick is smothered off the boot once again. Still the Blues. Relentless in their attack on the football. That kick goes across the face of goal. And it's been marked by Handley, who we believe may have hurt his ankle in a ruck contest two or three minutes ago. Handley will kick from about 15 metres, but the angle you can see there is his main contention. He's had a quiet day, but he hasn't been on his own. Handley kicks for goal, and he's put it through. Geelong have kicked their seventh goal. Yes, and Geelong's first goal this quarter. And in the meantime, Carlton have kicked four. So a pretty good build-up here. Lee Tudor's kick smothered for the umpteenth time by Peter Dean. Unbelievable. He's reading the ball off the boot. Pretty good kick from Liam Pickering to the front of the square. And Stephen Handley just manages to grab hold of it. Disappointing day for the Cats. But what a day for the Blues. The margin is back to 78 points. Never thought at the start of this day we'll be looking at the record books for the greatest winning margin, but that's 96 points held by Hawthorne. Ironically, Gary Ayres played that day back in 1988. So we're still in the middle, and we've still got just under 10 minutes remaining. Will Carlton rewrite the record books in this fashion too? Camparelli takes it from Brown. The youngsters charge to half forward to Kernahan. Couldn't take it cleanly. Ablett tidies up. He defends, but only down to the half-back line. And as far as Camparelli, who's got a player loose, that is Whitehead, he marks on right half forward. Silvani's down there as well. He goes for the centering kick, looking for Spalding. Barnes chips in. From half-back, John Barnes has got some runners on the outer side. McGrath is one of them. Gets around Williams. Kicks towards the centre wing, towards Paul Couch. He goes up towards Hickmont. Christo is the spoiler. Brewer in for the assist. Manton gives chase. Brewer is pretty brisk. Kicks in towards half forward. Sexton chops it off again. Now it's Carlton's turn to stream away. And stream away they do. It is Hogg running down the ground. They peel off everywhere. Williams could be the target. Ablett is with him. The two champs. Silvani in for the assist. Silvani will give it to Williams. He does. Over the top he goes to Whitehead. Whitehead from 35. Finishes it off for the goal. A wonderful rebound play from that terrific back line. Sexton read the ball well. Brewer just goes shot him too much of the ball. And then no car of Geelong player touched it down the member side to end up with Adrian Whitehead. She was clean, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. Williams absolutely knew what he was going to do when he gave that off the white end. Just draw the player a bit and then just set him up. 28 possessions for Greg Williams, including five goals. Sensational game. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh, Whitehead has played probably most football this year and he spent a long, long time in this grand final on the bench. Ablett with the footy. Goes down the ground. Well done by Dean. He's a hard man to keep out of uh, best on the ground contentions. Peter Dean, his spirit, his big heart, has been the lead for Carlton today. The kick across the heart, the fullback line to Christou. Christou looks for and finds Bradley. 
So the Blues prepared to play possession football. Camparelli had made good position. Bradley goes further, looks for McKay. He was nearly crunched there by Colbert. And the ball spills over for a throw in. 21 goals, 13 to 7 13. Margin is 84 points. And uh, Bobby Davis, the coach of the last Geelong Premiership team in 1963. Whitehead takes it away. He's 50 metres from goal. Unselfishly gives it to Matthew Hull. Matthew Hull. Well, good build up. Disappointing kick behind to the Blues. And Bobby Davis also has the honour of presenting the Premiership Trophy and the medallions. He'll be doing that. Not to his beloved Cats, but to Carlton. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Ablett in the back pocket. Comes up towards Colbert on centre wing. Lee Colbert has couch creating space. In fact, in the end, he's forced to just chip over the top to that player. Camparelli charges at him, but he gets his kick to half forward. And floating across the pack is Michael Mansfield. Thirteen kicks and eight marks for Mansfield today. He's kicked only five goals for the season, so let's see what his accuracy is like. Of course, with limited opportunities. Mansfield in his 97th game. Started away to the right. An attempted soccer off the ground by Hanley fails. Christou gives it away to Rat. Carlton are out of trouble again. Towards Silvani on the half-back flank. Meters in front of Ablett. He takes the mark and plays on. Gets around the cap champion and kicks the centre wing. Clappe has interfered with. He was held and he didn't have the football. Wants to go on with it, but has got to come back. Man to come off and Hannah to go back onto the ground, Sandy. Great thrill for Bill Hanna to no doubt finish the game on the ground. Yes, I think that would be the ploy there, sure. Yep. He's been an excellent servant of the club. 172 games. Barnes in a bit of trouble. In the meantime, Clappe towards half forward. Oh. The big hands of Kudafides, and he's got players screaming for that football. Bradley's one of them. Barnes, uh, in fact, it was Graham who came over the top. The whistle had sounded, and it's going to be a free kick. Young Ben Graham came charging over the top. Bradley is going to have a shot. It's actually, uh, Ben Graham did it pretty well. Gary Hocking just got him a bit high. Yeah. Marvellous player. So a couple more goals required by Carlton for a record-breaking margin. That's the last thing Geelong fans want to hear. But Bradley, with two in the game so far, one of those kicked earlier in this quarter. 45 degree angle, 35 metres out. Starts it right, it stays right, and one behind is the end result. Barnes gets the big jump and almost hangs onto it and uh, just fell awkwardly. The kick in has been taken by McGrath. McGrath goes in towards half back. Pickering gets it to Tanner. Tanner goes short and Lord misses it. Mansfield it was. McKay to Spalding. Spalding's got plenty of time. Gives away ground to Silvani. Silvani shares it with Whitehead. Whitehead can go to Brown. Brown's on his own. 65 metres from goal. Goes in towards the pocket. Kernahan knocked away by Graham for a boundary throw in about 40 metres around from the Carlton goal. So a little bit of a dust up behind play between uh, Spalding and Mansfield. Michael Mansfield not happy with that little elbow. Geelong try to clear from half back. Brown, handball in towards half forward. Spalding tries to crash his way through his court and will be penalised. Advantage is paid. Geelong come away. This is Lord from centre half back. He's kicked towards half forward. Pretty good. Christou gets into the action, but Hickmont 
takes a good mark, 50 metres from goal. Goes across the half forward line where Lord has provided the target. Lord is not that much closer, straight in front. Goes in towards the pocket and on his own is Handley. Not too many cheers, Geelong fans. Very quiet now. 21 goals 15 to 7 goals 13. So the 1995 Premiership flag will sail away at Carlton. Handley, he's kicked a goal. Kicking from 20 metres. And he does the job right for Geelong. He's kicked his second. Yeah, so Stephen Handley with two late goals in a game that's well over. And uh, I would suggest they're probably, uh, they are Geelong supporters. And just a ripple of noise now. And that margin from last year was ironically 80 points against that game against the Eagles. And how well we all remember that. And it's the same again. And with that lead up at build up, you would have thought there might have been something better from Geelong today. points the margin 21 15 plays 8 13 with under four minutes remaining tirelessly Madden goes at it again this time his opponent was Mench Bradley tries to soccer off the ground and has a fresh air shot Tanner couldn't pick it up cleanly neither could Whitehead Pickering comes away up towards the half forward line Hannah caught behind but fortune may favor him here he paddles the ball along in front of Brewer still going he shrugs off Brewer he has a bounce on the spongy surface and eventually Tudor rides him into the ground. It spills free to Brown. He is smothered. Tanner finally asks a question but gets very little response from the umpire. Only a bounce. Not a bad effort by Brown. 21 positions. Oh, such a cloud hanging over him. He's dominated uh, the headlines this week. Will he or won't he? His Lord from Tanner. Aaron Lord step passes in towards Brownless. It's too far for the boy from Gerildery. He may get another attempt. No, it'll go towards Pickering. In towards the square. Handley. Oh, he could have had a shot. Instead, he gives it to Lord, and it's one behind. Unbelievable. Yes, well, an interesting play, isn't it? When you're in the goal, edge of the goal square, just wonderful play from Silvani. That was amazing, wasn't it? Carlton get the ball out towards the wing. Colbert, clap A. Now Gary Hocking. Gary Hocking's little left foot kick is not far enough. Two defeaties is there. Another possession of that player. Shares it with Dean. Dean. That's a uh, rare mistake by Peter Dean. The kick marked at halfback. This is Ablett. Ablett into the centre of the ground. Lord to Tudor. Tudor goes long. Handley, surely he'll kick this. And this time does it right. Three goals to Stephen Handley, and he was disappointed with that last effort, but he gets John's ninth goal. There's just some chances being taken here by the Carlton defence now, and uh, fortunately for them, uh, Stephen Handley left three times virtually alone in that goal square now, and really could have been in four. the football now will finish off with a goal or two. 141 play, 68. Madden and Mitch. Brown for Carlton. A high kick by Fraser Brown. Well done by McKay. Knocks it forward. Spalding. In goes McKay again. Oh. <laughs> McKay and Hogg, both in the last quarter, have sprayed shots at goal. And that one out of bounds on the full. Graham's kick. Short to Barnes. Barnes in the back pocket, looking for players to just split from half back. Kicks it into that area where Lord is marked. The chant now for the Blues. Just time ticking away. One and a half minutes left. Lord's kick into the middle of the ground. Hannah! High. Oh, has been paid the mark. Players at half forward, streaming clear. Hannah goes short. Spalding couldn't take the mark. Gets back onto his left foot. And still trying, he shrugs the tackle, too high. Play on, says the umpire. Three Geelong players swoop on it, and they will come clear from half-back. The hand pass finishes with Tanner. 
Tanner goes in towards half forward. The mark is taken by Hickbot. Hickbot to Couch. Couch towards full forward. And the mark is taken by Brownless. 45 metres from goal. Billy Brownless has kicked one goal. The only multiple goal scorer for Geelong is Handley, who has kicked three. Brownless kicks for goal. It's a pretty good kick by Brownless. And he has registered a goal for Geelong. Yes, once again, El Sporting at the other end of the ground. Probably just to try to do some party tricks late in the game. And coughed up the footy. And it eventually ended up with some pretty good skills through the middle of the ground. Big mob to Couch was good. Couch, he hasn't done a lot of that. He hasn't got clear a lot today. He's got his touches, but never clear enough to really make Carlton pay. Great kick to there from Billy. Inside the last minute of the 95 grand final, hocking out of the centre for the Cats. He's down to half forward with a bounce. He chips towards Brownless again, and he marks just inside 50. Brownless for his second, in front of a crowd of 93,670. Wonderful crowd. Carlton fans delirious with this result. He's got another one, but it matters not. Barry Stoneham. Oh, that sad face of one of the skippers tells the story. His yes. wretched year is reflected by the game today. Yes, and the uh, brakes have gone off from Carlton now. They got insatiable there for a while, didn't they, with their appetite? They really flogged the game. John Elliott looks on. Very, very pleased man. I wonder if he's in a smoking area, Sandy. <laughs> he wouldn't care at this stage, would he? 80 plays 141. <laughs> I think not. Here's Bradley looking to finish in a blaze of glory. He tumbles it down towards right half forward. Pierce comes steaming out. It won't worry him to see a throw in. Bradley, 15 and 5 today, and that's the calmest David Parkin has been, quite possibly for the year. It's all over for the Cats, and the celebration's about to start for Carlton. And uh, uh, today, a one-way uh, win. Well, I think, you know, a bit of pressure on us all year to keep winning and keep improving. And, uh, you know, it's probably a fairy tale to win by this much in the granny. It's really been a year uh, uh, for purpose. I mean, David Park has put a lot of pressure on the players and, uh, and you've answered tremendously. Well, we're a committed bunch of blokes down here and uh, we're a good side. Oh, right, off you go, Shane. Off you go. Look out. Sauce. Yes, wonderful scenes here. What about Peter Dean? This was a mighty Thank game. Peter. Yeah, here, Peter. First of all, individually, congratulations on a great game. And what a fantastic team effort. Yeah, great team effort, girls. That's what we've done all year. We've lost a couple of games. They say to win a flag, you need three things. Discipline, commitment and team spirit. It was all there. Yeah, we had it this year. We had just had a great fight this year. All the young blokes, all the old blokes. Just went through the basic football things. That's all. This is a bloody basic game for you. Now, you had a tough one last week. There was a minor doubt about you. Were you confident that you felt OK? The old-fashioned rule kills. Nothing above the shoulders hurts, mate. Well done, Peter. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, good on you, Curls. And I'm sure that Peter Dean will most assuredly enjoy himself. A veteran of 207 games. Back to Dipper with one of the youngsters, yes, Brad Pearce. Thanks very much, Andy. One of the youngsters. Uh, well, one year with Carlton. Had a terrific season of full forward and uh, a premiership up here, about. Oh, dream come true, Dipper. This is great. fantastic. This is what football's all about. This is my life. It's all those boys' life. Let's get into it. Get on it. Now, 
as a young fella, I mean, uh, it is a dream come true to play in the Premiership. Oh, yeah, unbelievable feeling, you know. I was a Hawthorne supporter when I was young, and I used to watch you out there, didn't oh, well, Good on you. Mate, this is great. I just can't believe it. It's fantastic. Now, look, well, off you go. Thanks, off you go, buddy. Yes, what a moment for Brad Pearce, a, a former Hawk dipper, and he would have loved seeing you go barnstorming down the wing. Now it is his moment and Carlton's to save it. What about Harry Madden, uh, Robbo? He's been fantastic. Let's hear from him, Curls. OK, Harry, they call you Harry. And mu you must feel great. I do, I do. It's, uh, it's very emotional. And uh, it's been a long week. And uh, 17 years, a long time. Yeah, you got a little nick about the head there, but, yeah. gee, were they worth it to win a grand final? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Apparently, uh, the ones above the shoulders don't hurt too much. So. I was watching it three-quarter time. You were really pumped up trying to get the boys for that one last final quarter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I thought we always... I thought after that first quarter we always had it, but you can never be sure. And, uh, you know, we just learned to rent them up. I said to Peter, take three things. A lot of discipline, a lot of commitment, and a tremendous amount of team spirit. Oh, yeah. The, the team have been a fantastic side this year. They're a fantastic bunch of guys, and I don't mean that because we won. I mean that because they really are guys of fantastic character, and uh, that's why we were able to have a record like we did with the home and away games and uh, perform the way we did today. Your, your movement with, uh, firstly, Bradley and also Williams, you boys, do you practice it much? No, we don't, actually. <laughs> So it's just a gift. <laughs> Absolutely. You enjoy yourself, son. Well done. Back oh, to you, Sandy. Don't worry, he'll enjoy himself, Curls. Justin Madden. Well, he cried a couple of years ago. He almost cried with joy today. Uh, once again, down the dipper. Yes, yeah, Sandy. Well, Fraser Bounds, been a long week for you. Some of us thought you maybe uh, not played today, but uh, you feel it. Oh, there's a time there when I thought I'd pull out. But I just couldn't bear it. And I thank the guys down the hyper barrier. Like, I was going to say something to him, <laughs> the owner and the guys. But um, fantastic team effort and uh, just wrapped. I made the right decision to play and it'll be sore later. But who cares? And the pressure on you during the week, uh, David Parkin gave you every opportunity to play. He put the ball in my court, I suppose, so it was up to me whether I could do it. And it pulled up well, so I'm happy. Now, uh, Brandon, you smell a bit of champagne. Have you been drinking or I've cracked one already. Won't be long before it's in my guts. Good on you, mate. Enjoy it. Thank you. Celebrations tonight and bitter, bitter disappointment for Geelong. They are staying out on the ground for the presentation. That's coming your way now. And here is Seven Sports, Craig Willis. We felt it only fitting that a grand final crowd be given the chance to show their appreciation to one of the greats of the game, Gary Ablett, who won his third consecutive common medal by kicking 118 goals during the home and away season. To present the medal, would you please welcome the inaugural winner of the common medal and former Richmond champion, Michael Roach. Ladies and gentlemen, would you now welcome another former champion and Collingwood football premiership player, the great Bob Rose, to present the Norm Smith medal to the player judge's best of field in the 1995 grand final. Ladies and gentlemen, by unanimous vote, the birthday boy who celebrates his 32nd birthday today, Greg Williams. It's no disgrace to be runners-up to a team of the calibre of the Carlton Football Club. And 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome the former Geelong champion, dual premiership player and premiership coach, Bob Davis, to present the medallions to the player of the winning team. Number one for Carlton, Stephen Silvani. Number two, Greg Williams. Number five, Andrew McKay. Number six, Matt Clappe. Number seven, Brett Grattan. Number 13, Bill Hanna. Number 14, Michael Sexton. Number 19, Brad Pierce. Number 20, Fraser Brown. Number 21, Craig Bradley. Number 22, Glenn Manton. Number 23, Dean Rice. Number 32, Adrian Whitehead. Number 33, Matthew Hogg. Number 35, Peter Dean. Number 39, Ange Christo. Number 43, Anthony Kudafini.
Number 44, Justin Madden. game had, I think everyone was expecting, everyone was hoping that we were going to see a contest on a grand scale. It was grand, but it was all cold. Yes, it was. The super team of 95 have shown that on the day that it counted most. And, I mean, you must have some compassion, I suppose, for Geelong four times in seven years. But this was a super side. In fact, I'd say, go far as to say, it is probably the super side of the century. 20 wins, never been done before, and then for three finals to win a grand final by 11 or 10 or 11 goals. It's just an unbelievable performance. And to do it by winning 16 games straight and at the same time becoming the greatest premiership winners in the game now with 16 flags. Is it worthwhile mentioning that they only beat the Bears by about two goals? So yeah, on two occasions, they beat the Bears 14 points and 13 it's points it's in the space of a month. Yeah, I just mentioned that, that uh, during the call, Ian, that I said the preps of the Bears were, might have been the hottest side going around at the time. It's amazing, isn't it? Now, one of the great feelings in footy. Uh, going around. You can't beat that game. No, you can't. And look at Justin Madden. Justin just strolling. I couldn't imagine him getting into a jog at all. Amazing stuff. And of course, this is the Cup first AFL Premiership. They won one in the VFL in 1987. Yes. So it is. Have a look at Stephen Kernahan. What a great captain he's been, Robbo. You've seen him a lot. I don't think you go to bed probably until it's some <laughs> stage tomorrow afternoon. I think the only thing Carlton fans are hoping is that he doesn't break into the Tammy One End Classic Stand By Your Man as he did a number of years ago. I think well, they'll try anything in the next 24 hours. <laughs> and of course, son of Serge. He's been made his own name, hasn't he? Yeah, Stephen Silvani. Did a fantastic job on Ablett. There was early, especially early, there was a lot of body work. And I thought he, he just didn't let him at it. Oh, he's a pretty strong bloke, isn't he, Stephen Silvani? But, uh, you know, the, the effort around the middle of the ground and the defence was just enormous. And the forwards, when the ball goes down in a haphazard fashion like it did to Ablett, it just makes it that little bit easier. I'm not detracting, but uh, their defence was enormous. Mel Hanna. And uh, what a moment for well, these some of the youngsters. Dean Rice and Matt Clapo. St Kilda. A couple Eagles. of rejects. Well, I'm not sure about... I think that's actually. probably a bit yeah, harsh, yeah. but players are getting another chance. And yeah. Haven't they just grabbed it with both hands? Yes, they have. With a list of 42, now that's going to happen more and more, I believe. Yeah. Spalding's another one. Yeah. yeah. Well, there are a number on this yeah. ground today. Brad Pearce. Uh, I mean, I think Spalding's uh, performance in Perth towards the end of the year when he bowled uh, a couple of blokes over just set the scene for the last few 
uh, well, the last six weeks of the season for the Blues. Gee, haven't they uh, eliminated a myth that uh, they're a bit soft under pressure? Oh, that's a stronger game as you've seen. And last week against North Melbourne was a stronger two performances as you've seen. And what a moment for Greg Williams. He celebrates his birthday today. And Michael, Michael Sexton. Sexton. One of those unsung. Andrew yep. McCoy. What a get he was. So as they continue their way around the MCG, it's become an, a, a stroll now, an amble. They're exhausted, but they're delirious. The celebrations are just starting for Carlton. They are the champions for 1995. <laughs>